Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. This week I have been so lucky that I have been able to borrow this lens and today I would like to tell you my thoughts about it. So this is the 70-200 L series lens 2.8 image stabilized. Let's review it. First up, this lens is amazing. It has been the lens that I've enjoyed the most taking photos with, even videos, and it has been super fun. I really enjoyed using the 70-200. It has some downsides, but uh, for me the downsides weren't so significant to overcome the uh, upsides. This is really a phenomenal lens and let me tell you why. So to begin, in the box you get the lens, the lens hood, the case and the tripod ring. This is an accessory that you can mount onto the camera, onto the lens. I haven't mounted it because it, uh, I didn't need it, but all of these accessories, mainly the hood and the ring, will come in very handy once you start shooting. You will see why in a second. Firstly, this lens is incredibly heavy. Like, really, really heavy. If we take a look at the characteristics, the physical characteristics of this lens, you will see it's, uh, it, it's quite long. In fact, if you put onto it the hood, which you will most likely have to use it, let me explain why in a second, you can see this starts to get really, really long. Why is it so long? Well, if you take a look, this is a 2.8. This means it's super wide open and it's a zoom lens, so you need to have a lot of glass in it. The true beauty of this uh, lens is that uh, it is 2.8, but all the way through. So that means that if you go to 200, which is now, all the way down to 70, you will have 2.8, the aperture set fixed all the time, which is so, so handy. You could uh, think about it as if you have, for example, a lens that uh, doesn't have a fixed aperture, which is, for example, a kit lens or, a, you know, a non-L series lens, and that would cause that when you have a wide uh, angle, you will have, for example, 3.5. But you have some settings on manual mode that uh, are useful in 3.5. But if you, for, uh, for any reason, decide to zoom in, because you, for example, need to take a photo of something that is uh, farther away, guess what? The lens now is 5.5 for example so you lose quite a bit of light then you have to readjust the uh, you know the controls have it uh, have it uh, the same again so having a fixed aperture all the way through is super helpful since this is a zoom lens not any zoom lens but a 70 to 200 the white you know the white uh, grayish body of it is uh, more of a Canon's, uh, you know, wildlife line. So naturally, this lens does focus minimally from 1.4 meters, and you can switch it with this toggle right here to two and a half meters. So if you are lying in a bar, in a bush, or um, somewhere that you you would uh, might get the camera to focus on something that it's closer than actually you need to then you can switch it from 1.4 to 2.5 meters this lens is also stabilized it has two modes of stabilization and uh, you might be confused i was as well i probably still am but um, the first mode is basically anything if you say if we say so it's uh, something to reduce all the micro, you know, shakes and stuff like this. So that's helpful. But then there is the mode two. What, uh, what is it for? So the mode two is designed for panning, which means that you have the camera and you do something like this. 
So that's not as useful as the first mode, but since this lens is so smart that it can uh, automatically switch from the second mode to the first mode, I would just recommend you keeping it on two as you might need sometimes the panning mode. But if you don't, it will automatically switch for you to the first mode. Or oh, have I mentioned that this lens is sharp? Like, sharp, sharp. I will show you some photos. For example, this one, you can see that uh, it can really, really be amazing when it comes to sharpness, which I love. But, uh, you know, you, you won't usually have everything in focus as this is such a long uh, focal distance that pretty much everything but the subject will be blurred like as much as you want to or imagine so super helpful maybe not depends let's talk about these two accessories shall we so the hood is mandatory without this you won't be able to shoot outdoors like almost at all since this lens is um, you know the front element is very close to the edge when you will be shooting outside most likely it will be sunny and the sun the sun rays will hit the lens at under any angle and that will cause light distortions so if you don't want that because that can uh, mess up an image pretty bad if you don't expect it so the hood will extend the front element or you know the gap between the front element and the outside world so this way now you have about uh, 15 centimeters more so if any sun rays come from the same angle they will be just blocked by the hood now that the hood is out of the way let's talk about this ring so I told you this lens is about three kilograms heavy, maybe more, maybe less. If you mount it to a camera, you want to put it on a tripod because it's a heavy lens. You maybe cannot hold it in, in one hand, uh, keep it steady, whatever. You cannot mount it to, the, to like the, the tripod mounted to the camera because if you do, because if you do, this will generate a massive force in lever, which means that uh, you will just have it pretty much all the weight in the front, which will cause to tip the camera. Why this exists is just you put it on, on the red dot, you turn it so the line aligns to that line and you screw it on. Now you have another tripod mount, which means that now you can mount the camera on the back and have the tripod be in the middle of the weight, you know, the weight zone. It adds some, uh, a little bit of weight and more size, but this lens is built like a, like a tank. I could kill you with this. This is super, super durable, very durable. I would love to just show you this. Look, just look how wide this glass is. It's so, so beautiful. Like, I am super in love with this lens. I know it's heavy, it's super inconvenient in some situations, but it's so gorgeous. I'm literally in love with this thing. Also, let me know, what do you think about this all new camera? I don't know if you have noticed. I think it's, uh, it's a little bit different from this. And I really love the 90D. It's amazing right now i'm recording in 4k if you see this video that means just my computer has survived this overload of 4k in high bitrate so just just a thumbs up for that i would thank so thanks a lot for watching subscribe if you are not yet i mean i hope my videos are decent enough for you to consider it if they are. Thank you a lot and I will see you next time. See you.